We in Australia. In January 2019, last month, uh, many parts of the country experienced uh, temperatures above 40 degrees, which were some of the hottest days uh, in the history of uh, Australia that have been recorded. In northern Queensland, uh, there was a severe rainfall that caused uh, a lot of floods down in Townsville. And uh, Australia is also a subject uh, to multiple natural disasters, including cyclones and bushfires, which seem to be more frequent in recent years. One of the most important and famous ecosystems of Australia, the Great Barrier Reef, is experiencing bleaching. Most of these events are at least partially attributable to climate change. There are many relationships between tourism and climate change. Climate change affects tourism, and tourism affects climate change. A recent study published in Nature Climate Change suggests that 8% uh, of carbon emissions are attributable to tourism through direct emissions in aviation and indirect emissions on accommodation and uh, attractions and food and beverage. Since tourism is growing rapidly, its carbon footprint also expands. As uh, economies of countries across the globe grow, more people are taking holidays, often multiple times per year, and to faraway destinations. While at the destination, tourists tend to relax and often consume more than at home, eat huge beef steaks, drive four-wheel drives, visit theme parks, shop, and so on. Or they may choose a cruise holiday, which also burns a lot of fossil fuel. And so tourism contributes to climate change. Climate change mitigation strategies are required to reduce the impact uh, of tourism on climate change. That uh, foremost uh, uh, requires uh, the reduction of long-haul travel in favor of staycation, spending your holidays at home, or going to nearby destinations by train, or better still, by bicycle. If you still want to travel to far away lands, then reduce the number of trips. Hopefully, technological advancement can reduce business travel, since business travelers actually may like to travel less. New aircrafts are typically more fuel efficient, so patronizing airlines with new fleet may also help reduce travelers' carbon footprint. But emissions also occur on the ground. Many hotels design and operate in a more energy-efficient manner, while responsible travelers avoid overconsumption and energy-heavy activities. Climate adaptation strategies are also required as most of the destinations get affected uh, by the climate change. Uh, for example, ski resorts uh, may be affected uh, through the uh, shorter uh, snow season and unreliable snowfall. Destinations reliant on marine wildlife, like North Queensland, need to adapt to coral bleaching and reduction in marine life sighting. Similarly, some habitats may become uninhabitable for wildlife, impacting on safari operators. In dry regions of Australia, nature-based tourism is endangered by longer bushfire seasons. Some destinations may struggle to provide basic resources such as water to residents and won't be able to accommodate visitors. A lot of uh, tourism occurs in the beach areas. and. Uh, uh, beach uh, can be subject to erosion and the increase in uh, sea levels. All destinations are at risk of experiencing natural disasters more frequently, requiring crisis management strategies that help protect both local residents and visitors. Climate change poses threats to many human activities, including the very existence of the species. And tourism is only one example of uh, the relationship between an economic activity and climate change.